Hi, I'm Greg Tambone. I spent several years as an international fugitive working as a private security consultant and contractor, all the while being hunted by various government agencies. Today, I'm gonna to share with you the tactics that allowed me to operate successfully off-grid. Today, we're gonna to discuss things from more of a rural perspective, meaning wooded areas or what we would call to be country type areas. And that's quite different from what you would encounter in the city and the skills that you would need in an urban area which is where we would say gray man theory would apply much more all right as far as the real gray man theory if you want to know more about that i've got an entire playlist on it here on the channel but those particular rules that apply in the city don't necessarily apply in the rural areas so what we have here is the change over to camouflage unless you are able to as far as smuggling and things of that nature are concerned hide things in plain sight. Hiding things in plain sight and the real gray man theory are both molding the perceptions of those around you so that other people seeing you think that what you are or what you have is what you want them to think, right? One example would be if I'm smuggling and I'm using Coke cans that uh, have the liquid in there but have a hidden secret compartment and then those are even nowadays available. I think you can get them off eBay, but that's an example of hidden in plain sight. Something that might just be rattling around in the back of my truck or maybe in a cooler with other Coke cans and then I have the ability to have a stash, right? That's an example. The same thing applies to a person, right? So if I look the part to not get messed with or to be able to pass what test I'm trying to pass, if that's certain kind of border, then I need to know the area of operation, I need to know what the border guards are looking for, and then I need to play that typical role. If I'm crossing, you know, into a country where Americans are favored and looked upon as tourists, then I need to play the part of an American tourist. If I don't wanna stand out as an American, then things are gonna be much more difficult because also the tradecraft uh, secret one of the main things of tradecraft is really not trying too hard. You want to play the role that you're good at. But let's get a little bit deeper into the rural tactics and country and off-grid woods tactics that we're going to get talking about today. So like I said, gray man theory becomes camouflage. If you don't have access to one of the world's top camouflages like the shirt that I'm wearing right now, then you are gonna to wanna to camouflage yourself the best way possible. You can use mud, you can smear, you know, different types of mud on your clothes and then stick leaves and stuff to try and break up your outline. There's so many different ways to camouflage yourself, but why is it that gray man theory becomes camouflage when there's nobody else around? Well, if there's nobody else around and you get seen, and especially if it's a prohibited area, then obviously you just can't get seen. You can't be molding the perspectives of others if you're not supposed to be there, all right? The ultimate gray man theory in that case might be actually acting like another border patrol agent if you're trying to cross the border, but that's really advanced stuff. And what we're gonna talk about first is just basic, the basic sight and then camouflaging yourself. So like I said, camouflage colors are the colors that exist in nature. You don't wanna be using a lot of black for your camouflage. You wanna be using greens, tans, really depends on the environment, browns, stuff like that. Then it's all about breaking up that human silhouette, right? So that's your camouflage. You definitely wanna be wearing light colored clothes if you are not able to wear camouflage. And then, like I said, you can smear darker colors onto yourself. Then you can use actual foliage stuck into certain parts of your clothing and what you're wearing to further break up that outline. A ghillie suit would be a good example of that. The study of camouflage is really in depth. I'll do a practical video on that as well. We did, uh, we have touched on that subject in the recon tactics videos that I've put up. There's a couple recon tactics videos here on the channel where we've gone semi in depth and there's some other survival escape and evasion videos where we discuss more in camouflage as well. Something else I'll touch on is that it's not just the necessarily the sight of a man that's you're camouflaging yourself against. Now in today's day and age, you may have to camouflage yourself against FLIR or thermal imaging as well. So if there's no people around, but there's monitoring devices that can see my body heat or that can sense movement, I have to be prepared for that. You know, distraction and, um, you know, 
creating diversions and stuff like that is great if you're looking at doing large movements like if you have a big shipment or a bunch of people or you want to get you want to go across the border one time or go through that dangerous area one time then create some diversions and and gun it okay go for it if you're going to be using that tract or that area uh very often if it's a, if it's something you want to maintain then you need to go the subtle e evasion route and and not get seen not get noticed and that's when you go you know often with as few people as possible if not by yourself and in order to defeat thermal imaging sensors and FLIR, stuff like that, you need to mask your body heat. You can do that with Mylar. You can sew Mylar strips into your clothes. Definitely be aware that having Mylar, coating yourself in Mylar, will raise your body heat more. It might help you with your signature, but you're gonna get really hot if it's a hot environment. So go at night and, uh, and there are other options, okay? Uh, as far as masking your body heat, there's fiber optic options that are out there. There's a uh, fiber optic technology um, that can be woven into the fabric of the clothing. It does not exist for civilians yet. It's existed for the military now for almost 15 years. They've had fiber optic technology to defeat thermal imaging, but um, it's something that can be done even as a civilian, if you study up on it and, and it's a lot of work, but it can be done. If it's that big of a deal for you, then then look into it. Definitely are gonna have to worry about thermal imaging. If, if there's something that's sensing thermal imaging, you can start fires in different areas, but also that's something that's gonna be a diversionary tactic and it's gonna oftentimes burn that route, like we like to say. So from there, you want to look at movement all right movement is another thing that's detected you either want to go really fast or really slow often really slow is the way to go to not burn that route because if you do go really fast and you get where you're going and they see you you might still get where you're going and survive and then be able to blend once you get into the with people again something like that or escape but your routes burned okay there's going to be a bunch more people watching that choke point when i say slow movement i'm talking about if i had if i'm in a ghillie suit full camo you know ghillie suits never buy by the way just a pro tip never buy a ghillie suit the only way that a ghillie suit is actually really a ghillie suit is if you make it yourself for the environment definitely store-bought ghillie suits do not work they have the opposite effect they're just going to get you caught i've had i've been suited up in in full camo and had people that were looking for me walk right in front of me okay and it's um it's all about good camo and and movement when i say movement for example if i had to cross a road it might take me four or five hours six hours just to cross the road this road that i'm sitting on right here i would have to figure out a way to get across there so slowly that i didn't attract my movement didn't attract and i would also have to break up my silhouette enough somehow that i was not recognized as a human being or as a body so there's a there's a, a a crawl that you do where you just move yourself and drag yourself across the ground so slowly that uh does not attract attention to where a person would recognize another person will recognize you as a person and it might work for surveillance equipment but then that surveillance equipment might also be triggered and then you're going to have a human eye looking and saying you know what is that is that tree cancer or is that a person there or is that big clump of grass crossing the street you know then you got to keep all that in mind we go through the senses when we're talking about being in a rural environment and and survival and escape and evasion and smuggling and all that kind of stuff so there's smell right you got to worry about dogs you got to worry about dogs sense of smell so there's uh different chemicals and different compounds and different even natural substances that you can use to trick or to block or to bother dogs scent okay capabilities you need to worry about your own smell all right you want to pre be preparing your clothing removing the scent from your clothing washing it they sell hunting clothing washes that are scent removers that don't have odor you want to be matching the diet of the locals or making sure that you're not eating something that's going to get you thrown away or uh given away excuse me and just all everything about the the scent is important and and needs to be considered from there there's sound okay which sound is probably the number one giveaway in reality that's why it's nice to be able to move during a storm or in the rain things like that is because it really just helps block that those dead giveaway human sounds in the forest uh a deer for example hardly makes any noise they when they walk they they take steps in odd numbers and humans are bipedal creatures we have two legs almost all the forest animals walk one two three stop something like that 
Maybe they take another step, another three steps, but they don't stop on even number steps. So that gives us a way to the animals around and if, to the trained ear as well. You need to learn how to walk through woods without making noise on all different kinds of environments, as well as walking through without leaving a trail. So you need to know what materials will leave prints or tracks, learn how to cover tracks. If you do have to leave tracks, learn how to use water to have, you know, enter a river at one point, exit at another, things like that. Water is a good way to help you move your scent. Like I said, rain, I love moving in the rain. I love doing movements, crossing borders, anything that I have to do. If it's dangerous, the level for me goes down because I'm much more, I'm a ghost in, the, in, in a normal environment and I'm impossible to detect when it's raining, okay? If, if, there's, a nice, if there's a nice good storm, then you're, you know, there's just zero chance that anything's gonna detect me. And then most guys aren't willing to even be out in a storm. So it's just game over right there. So weather and all of these things are, are things to consider, but noise is, uh, noise travels incredibly out on the water light travels, fire travels, smell travels, all this stuff travels with the wind. So we need to just be aware of the world that we live in, right? What are these materials? Do I leave tracks? How do I not leave tracks? How do I, co how do I cover my tracks? All this type of stuff we need to understand. What are the colors out here? What are the elements out here? How do I start a fire? How do I you know, collect stuff that I'm gonna be needing on the way? What sounds are normal? What does the wildlife do around me when there's a person in the woods? What does it do when it, everything's normal and natural? Okay, so I can tell right now if somebody's walking through here by the by the sounds that the foliage and the, even the birds are making because those are telltale signs for somebody who's studied that stuff. And it's just knowing your area of operation and being your, aware of your surroundings. All right, guys, so everything that makes a noise, think about it. All of the elements, learn them, okay? All of the elements that make up your area of operation, learn everything about it. All, it's all about studying, being a student of life. Never think that you know everything. Never be that guy that is the know-it-all. And then you'll always be learning and you'll always be one step ahead if you're open to learning. Even if you think you're right, give it a, give it a chance. Challenge your thoughts. And I think this is how we can really just become masters of our craft. We really become a master when we learn that we'll always be a student and we'll never know everything. Okay, so that's kind of really what I wanted to share today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please comment below and let me know what kind of more topics in this range that you'd like to see if you like these kind of videos or if you don't, because that's how I keep them coming for the channel. So guys, the stuff we're discussing right now is serious stuff. First, I'm gonna say always have a plan, always have a backup plan. But more important than all of that, is always be realistic with yourself. Know how far you're willing to go because this isn't a game out here, guys. And when something comes up and something serious happens, you have to know how far you're willing to go. Are you willing to go farther than the next guy? And if we're talking about, you know, doing things in either a combat zone or if you're trying to escape and evade people who are trying to kill you, then that's a very serious question. And you have to be realistic with yourself. Are you willing to go as far or farther, preferably farther, than the people who are after you or the people that you're evading, okay? Definitely give yourself an honest answer and really think about if it's a good idea to do what you're doing and if it's necessary, all right? Plan A, plan B, and this is Bone Tactical checking out. Thanks for watching, Bone out.